That's all I hear coming from the rear wheel. And I already know what that means. I'm in for a bear of a job. I'm back in the garage with the aviator. That is Explorer, if you speak Lincoln. And she always wants to be in here, be center of attention. See what's going on here. A little horizontal movement. Definitely more vertical movement. That is not good. First thing that I did was grab the old PB blaster and soak the axle nut. Give it time to get in there because I already know I'm going to be taking this entire thing apart and I'm not looking forward to it. See what the verdict is. Okay, to get a good look at what's going on, I'm gonna get the brake out of the way. That'll be a good starting point. Just gonna rig up a little strap here. Come over here to the two caliper bolts, 10 millimeters. Get them out of the way. Oh wow, that takes forever. Maybe this might be easier. Oh yeah. Okay, I'll get this guy up and out of the way. Keep that happy. Take a look at this rotor here. Sometimes these can be really bonded on there. Um, we have the emergency brake. I need to push this out. Okay, for anybody interested, I have the factory books for this aviator. This is an exploded view of what we're looking at. So we're going to remove this guy out. What is that called? Number seven. Parking brake lever out of the parking brake lever boot. Uh, see how the shoe comes apart if we need to deal with that. I'm not sure. All right, so let's go remove it. I just grabbed a uh, pry bar. And this is what needs to come out uh, from this... Um, behind this um, brake disc shield. I'm just gonna pry out a little bit. Uh, maybe, maybe like so. Try to work this out. You can see we're getting a little gap there. Okay. Work that out. It's gonna be getting a lot of stuff out of the way for a while. Ooh, what's this? Uh, a wheel speed sensor here. Probably barely on there at all. Uh, looks like eight millimeter. Hopefully get a view of that. That's so small I can't even get my fingertips on it with the glove. I don't want to lose that guy. There's a little plastic clip keeping it in place. Definitely don't want to break that. Oh, come on. Hey, okay, got it out without breaking it. Get that out of the way. All right. 
looks like it's 35 millimeter. All right, so I'm gonna do this kind of blind below the knuckle. It's down there, trust me. Uh, the top one we can probably see here. There it is. Just gotta pop those on out. Give it a little tap. I heard it. There it is. Okay, I need to step up my lighting game. So on this side, 18 millimeter, I'm gonna hold that in place. Um, with a breaker bar, and then on this side, uh, it was 13 sixteenths, deep socket. Get over that long stem of the bolt. Came off easier than I thought. Okay. So again, a little tappity tap. So far, so good. All right, taking a look at what we're working with. Here's another exploded view. Oh, that's a good shot. Uh, here's the upper uh, ball joint that is kind of pinched into the knuckle. Um, here is the spindle of the half shaft. Um, okay, here where the knuckle connected down through um, this lower uh, arm here. So that was the 13 16 nut with the 18 millimeter uh, bolt. Um, here were those two bolts um, that kind of secured themselves in place with the square head on them. They had the 18 millimeter um, nuts on it. Uh, has some torque specs for the axle nut. Uh, we'll get into all that. Okay, another exploded view. Uh, oh, this is where we're at right here, the toe link coming over. I'm gonna try to unbolt that. Some information about all that. Anyway, um, let's see, best way of approaching it. I know it's on there pretty tight. And um, I think probably three quarters oh, here I got a deep socket three quarter and I uh, might need to break it um, with a breaker bar okay I feel like I'm armed pretty good here let's get back at it and not knock my head on that tail hitch there All right, breaker bar, check. Okay, got it loose for the most part. Get some air on it.
Okay. Maybe find that nut, put it back on the tow link so I don't lose that. Okay, we're at the point where we need to push the uh, CV shaft uh, through the knuckle. Uh, it recommends that you use a remover front wheel hub uh, specialty tool. You can rent that at the automotive store. Um, I'm not going to do that. It says, do not use a hammer to separate the outboard CV joint from the hub. Damage to the threads and internal CV joint components can result. And I have done that before. I did not read that. And I'll show you what I did momentarily. Uh, so a little PB penetrating blaster here behind the knuckle. Okay, just trying to spin this knuckle around. That was the purpose of removing the toe link. Being cautious not to nick the boot on the CV shaft, that wouldn't be good. You can see I've been in here before. I still see my anti-seize on the spindle of the CV shaft. Okay, so this upper ball joint is pinched into the knuckle where that bolt was kind of pinching this iron together here. I'm going to get a chisel in there to wedge it out a little bit, pop that up. I think I'm going to start with a big flathead screwdriver. I don't want to drive in and hit the boot of that ball joint. I'm going to start a little lower here. Let me try to get my bigger chisel in here at this point. See, we're getting some separation in there. Okay, we've broken free. It doesn't look too bad. All right, same thing on this one. I'm going to start with the skinnier screwdriver here.
Okay. Oh, how could I forget? Have to deal with this terrible snap ring first. Well, that came off much easier than usual. Don't want that to come flinging off. Knock your teeth out, poke your eye out. I am amazed how easy that came out. I'm gonna clean this up a bit, take a look at it. Normally just replace these, but this thing is still in good condition. Well, think about that. All right, as we move along and approach the press, I have a scrap piece of steel eight inch pipe that a friend of mine brought me a few years ago. He's a um, sprinkler uh, pipe fitter and hangs these in the rafters of commercial buildings. And I've used this before on uh, wheel bearings and it worked perfectly. This is the hub. This is, oh, you can hear that wheel bearing. This needs to be pressed out of the knuckle. And I've found that this pipe supports it perfectly. Uh, real quick, uh, these snap ring pliers, these were real heavy duty. They were ratcheting. So I didn't have to um, hold these while I was doing that. It, it clicks and holds its, um, you know, posture there or whatever. And that worked real well on that job. Um, back to the um, press here. Uh, another method a lot of people will use, they'll get a, an old um, rotor and blow torch out the center and use that um, steel ring to uh, replicate what I'm doing here. So um, I went over to um, AutoZone, rented this brand new bearing race and seal master driver set. It was like 70 bucks. You can have it for three months and get your full money back. Um, so this, um, is the hub that needs to be pressed out of the bearing or out of the, yeah, out of the bearing. So something about this diameter, we want to press exactly on that ring, not on the bearing. So I'll be using something like that. Um, another view, flip this back over. So this whole thing is going to be pressed through this pipe and we cut it close. There's just enough clearance from these studs to the bottom of that pipe uh, about the almost exactly about the size of the wheel bearing itself. And uh, you need clearance because you don't want to press these um, hub studs into the bottom plate of the press. So I need to move this air tank out of the way and we are gonna get at it. You know, I hate to backtrack a bit, but I wanted to mention this. This is where I went wrong uh, last time I serviced a wheel bearing. I had taken somebody's advice and put the axle nut flush on the um, tip of the um, threads of the CV shaft. And I used that and hammered the CV shaft through the knuckle and these threads were so damaged. I tried to re-thread them. Um, it was impossible. I ended up having to replace the entire CV shaft all the way into the rear differential and it was um, very miserable. So uh, mine came out very easily, but some of these older vehicles if it's never been worked on before, it can be so rusted that, um, you know, using that uh, air chisel or even a, a hub uh, puller is very difficult. So I just wanted to touch on that real quick. Back to the hub, being pressed on out of here. Um, one more pointer. 
um, to give us a little more clearance. Uh, again, I'm cautious of those studs bottoming out and hitting these rings. We'll spread that out a bit. You know, so the idea that these um, don't hit that at all. See that? That gives us, uh, you know, a little bit more space. So as I line this up, you know, we'll cheat these support plates out a bit. So what we're looking like, I got to get a line just perfectly and we'll come back to it. Okay, I think we're lined up pretty good. We're going to set that right onto the hub. Okay. Probably going to hear some popping. You might see me flinch a bit. Pressing on there. I got no give yet. Wow. Wish I knew how many pounds were pressed on it right now, but it's a lot. flexing you see that that's not good okay we're gonna back off how do you get that off great I bent their brand new tool all right I need to see what's going on here that does not look good I don't know if you can see how bent that brand new tool is that's going to slow me down potentially. So what I'm trying to do is eliminate that shaft and bring the whole wheel bearing up closer to the press. I don't know if it'll stretch that far, but we're going to find out. All right, well, let's find out. Look at this whole thing is flexing Harbor Freight shop press. Oh my gosh, this is scary. Look how flex this entire thing is. Wow. I feel like I need a shield. <laughs> How about a life jacket? Ought to, ought to stop a bullet. I don't know about my face, though. Oh my gosh, come on. Man, I am scared to go further than that. All right, I'm going to give this a rest and think about it.
All right, well, this should have been given from the beginning. I didn't use any PB blaster on this. And this can make all the difference. All right, back at it. I put the entire uh, tool drawer in front of the press. Just as a safety precaution, I got the other camera positioned right in front of the wheel bearing and press. And let it soak with PB Blaster. Uh, probably 20, 30 minutes. I'm not even gonna watch. I got the camera positioned right on it. Nope. Might even get a little extension on this lever. Probably gonna see me flinch here. Oh wow, that's a lot of pressure on this thing. Ooh, heard a pop, I heard a drop. I think my camera fell. Probably gonna get some more loud popping. But I definitely feel more secure standing behind this tool drawer. Kind of shields my face and everything. You never know, just in case. As far as this press wants to go down, it's fully extended. No, it's going down further, actually. Yeah. There's hardly any pressure on it now. Oh, there's not a nice pot. Hoping this hub is not damaged. Oh man, this is still attached. Hope this comes right off. Man, the outer race is still attached to the hub. I don't know how to how I'm gonna get that off. Okay, just made a really costly mistake and before I show uh, what I did wrong so you can see what not to do, I'm gonna show you the result. And I cracked my knuckle right where the parking brake actuator or lever uh, goes through that boot. It cracked. Um, these ears on the knuckle are real bent out of alignment. So I have a brand new knuckle that I purchased from Ford. That was the only place I could locate one. And you can see on one end there's that groove. That's where the snap ring goes through. You remove that snap ring and that wheel bearing only has one way to be pressed out of it. And I was pressing on it the opposite direction. And you can see inside the knuckle, um, there is a lip. That's where the wheel bearing bottoms out. So I was distracted and I never flipped the knuckle over and I was pressing the wheel bearing inwards instead of outwards. And you can see, if you watch that uh, parking brake uh, section of the knuckle, you'll see it just collapse. And that was pretty frustrating.
So, uh, and then while I was at it, I grabbed a new uh, dust cover from Ford. As you can see, this one is pretty toast. And uh, now back to where I'm at, just moving forward. I have the um, rest of the outer race still connected to the hub. I'm gonna at least try to salvage the hub and save some money. And that section between the hub and that outer race is very small. I couldn't get my plates for the press in between there. So I rented this tool, um, this bearing separator. You can see it thins out there in the middle and that's enough to get under that lip of the outer race. And I had to get creative here. I have my uh, eight inch pipe and these uh, bolts aren't quite long enough to go across the whole pipe. It does, but it looks like it'll just uh, collapse inwards. So I got some um, stuff that just was around me, some um, dumbbells, a brick. I have these, um, what are these files, metal files to try to support this. So hopefully that gives a bit. Could see my plates are wanting to bend inward that's what i was afraid of so i use these files hopefully they don't bend not looking too good oh it's going so while i was on the website for ford i wanted to get some new axle nuts as you cannot find them on ebay amazon summit racing 1a auto any of the local auto parts store you can only get them from ford and they sell them in a four pack for 55 dollars so this stuff is just adding up so you can see it's about to separate here probably going to get some noise at least something's going smoothly just got to stay positive That just snapped, I'm pretty sure that just snapped my uh, metal file there. All right, we're back at it. I just repositioned this bearing separating tool, the socket. Let's see if we can finish this up. See, these plates just want to taco inwards. That's why I was using those metal files trying to support this tool. There it goes. What a pain. Well, this little tool worked out as 50 bucks to rent and get your money back. All right, back to our instructions here. They wanted us to grab a hold of the hub and pull it out from the CV shaft and uh, to not use a hammer. I did use an air hammer, but it just came out like butter anyway. They want us to remove and discard the wheel hub with a suitable press. Um, remove and discard the wheel bearing retainer ring uh, remove and discard the wheel bearing. Um, back to the exploded view of the retainer ring, wheel bearing, knuckle, dust cover, hub. Just giving an overview for anybody who wants to see that. Another exploded view of the ball joints, the whole knuckle hub assembly. Now, this OEM bearing, race, and seal master driver set I got from AutoZone. The biggest size here, J3.180 inches. Um, got a new wheel bearing. I did buy that from Ford as well. Um, I've done this uh, twice on each side already. And the wheel bearing... Um, Ha, keeps failing so uh, I'm gonna go with a motorcraft wheel bearing so that 3.180 doesn't 
support this outer race. It barely touches it. It tends to put pressure on the inner race. So, and what I ended up doing, since this is not large enough, I pressed out the old outer race, which um, I couldn't get this largest plate on because of that lip on the knuckle. Let's flip it over. That lip is what supports that outer race, so you can't get the largest diameter um, driver set on there, even so that that doesn't fit it anyway. So that's why they have a tendency to push uh, the bearings out of the outer race when pressing it, and you'll be left with this um, outer race again. And so I had to grab a smaller diameter driver set and in here that kind of beveled edge I put this smaller diameter um, driver set on there and press this whole thing out. Now the idea is that this will rest on the outer race of the new bearing. You can see there's a little bit of a lip to keep it from pressing on the inner race. So I'm going to use that to press the new wheel bearing in. And that is the plan of action. We're going to get a little wheel bearing grease. Um, we're going to support the new knuckle um, right in this area here, um, supporting that lip. So, uh, which we want to watch out for these ears there that they're not, you know, that they're floating freely because uh, otherwise it'll be unlevel. Okay, so this. All right, so we're gonna float these ears over the press. And now this is fully supported on that lip there. This doesn't appear to be directional at all. So we'll see what the largest diameter driver set. I mean, it does just barely support it. But I didn't want that pressing on that inner race at all. Because that could be trouble. I'm just going to slowly press that in. seems to be pressing a bit crooked. I don't know what's up with that. This whole thing is just probably out of alignment from all the wear and tear. I'm talking about the largest diameter driver set. Having a hard time staying level. I can't tell, but it looks like this inner race is rising up, and I'm getting concerned about that. I may have already damaged it. 
So I am going to try to support this entirely with the largest diameter I have to prevent that from blowing out. Appears to be going in evenly now. Just see how important it is to stay level at the beginning. I may have damaged it already. All right, seems to be seated in there. We got room for the snap ring. Very unhappy with how this went. I've chosen to reuse my snap ring. It looked like it was in fine condition coming out. I didn't damage it at all in my opinion. All right. So, flip this over. holes up and we need to make this go in here All right, I just got finished fighting with the parking brake a little bit. Um, a trick that I did uh, to help this spring go in as it's very stiff is these two shoes as they sit sideways. I put this one in, hooked it, the spring on it, and stood this shoe upright and hooked the spring on it. And then I just folded this down and, and tucked it in there with the spring attached. Um, had to fight with these little clips a bit. I did order new springs from Ford as well. I wanted to order a whole new uh, hardware kit, but they were back ordered. Okay, so um, we're gonna flip this over now. Take a look at how we're gonna press it in. So we need to support this inner race um, as we're pushing the hub uh, this direction. It's gonna be um, you know, po possibility of forcing that uh, inner race out. As the outer race is supported by the snap ring, we're gonna take some um, plates here and build this up on the press to support that inner race. And I don't want this to rest on the snap ring. I want it to kind of float in between there. But as I, lay them down here and put the knuckle on it seems like I, I can't tell if it's seated properly so um, what I'm going to do is set that there and um, maybe do 
a little piece of duct tape to just keep it in place so I can be, you know, assured that it's not sliding out of the way. And I have chosen to reuse the hub as well. I know the instructions say to discard it, but I had to buy an entire new knuckle and I got to save some money. Whatever works. At least that went in a lot easier than the wheel bearing. So it's looking pretty good. Okay, moving forward to get the uh, new knuckle back onto the CV shaft. Um, I'm going to summarize real quick just in case there's not enough time to upload the footage of the reverse order um, from disassembling to reassembling. Uh, starting with the toe link, need to um, press that back into the uh, knuckle and uh, issues just continue to get worse. The tie rod end at the end of the toe link, the boot is busted, there's grease coming out. Um, back to my factory book from Ford here. Um, here's our toe link. Um, that is number 15 uh, toe link part number 5A972. When I go to FordParts.com, that part pulls up, but it says it's incompatible with my vehicle, so I didn't have time to play around with that. It was kind of annoying. I got this from Amazon uh, for like $33. It's a motor or a uh, um, doorman um, lateral link, toe link, tie rod end, whatever you want to call it. Uh, apparently these may come in two different sizes. Um, my um, post that pinches into the knuckle uh, is about 17 millimeters. Apparently there might be one that's 15 millimeters. So um, when I uh, lined them up side to side, it was uh, very obvious they were not in the same adjustment. I took my um, millimeter rule and measured the adjustment from the um, nut to the um, first thread. I lined that up over here. It fits perfectly in the gaps between the threads. I counted the gaps. Anyway, I got it into um, good enough adjustment. And I will take this over to, I don't know, Big O Tires and have a uh, alignment done shortly after this. So this is what I need to summarize in case we run out of space to upload the video. Uh, toe link, um, as you follow it along here, it is going to have 59 foot-pounds of torque. Uh, following it over here, Ooh, uh, all right, here's a better view, the exploded view. Um, here's the, the tie rod end. Um, it pinches into the knuckle with that square-headed bolt and that nut following it over 66 foot-pounds. Uh, top uh, ball joint is going to press in. Uh, we're going to grease that up, press that in 
to the uh, top of the knuckle, another square bolt, uh, follow that over, 66 foot pounds as well. Push this uh, knuckle over the um, <clears throat> spline of the uh, CV shaft. We're gonna do some, um, I don't know, anti seize might have some anti seize around here, high temperature thread sealer on the threads of the CV shaft and most importantly, our axle nut. Um, that's the part number for it, by the way, if you can't find it, cause I had a hell of a time. Uh, 203 foot pounds. That should get us back on the road here. Okay, number seven, I'm wearing down here. Lower arm to wheel knuckle bolt, 111 foot pounds. Eighteen millimeter. Thirteen sixteenths. Deep socket. Done. All right, following toe link over, 
We got 59 foot pounds. It's an 18 millimeter. See this flag wants to work its way around. It's gonna hit here and stop. Done. All right, little helper. You got some good light on there. Push this through there. Okay. Oh. It's it stuck out. Ooh. I think we got it in there. That's it. Good job. Okay, new axle nut. I had to go buy a new socket, 36 millimeters to get over that, where the last one was 35 millimeters. Not sure what's up with that. Okay, you ready? Yeah. You, and you help me hold it? Yep, that? I'm gonna help you hold it. Okay, tell me Okay, to you go ahead and pull the trigger. Good job. A new axle nut had some red thread sealer on it already. up a bit. Silicone. Push that piston in. Why don't you shine a light right here, buddy? Let me. 
Okay, exploded view of the disc brake system. Um, these two uh, bolts here, number one, brake caliper bolts. Uh, they're just 24 foot-pounds. They're 10 millimeter. Snug those up. All right, since we're reusing the hub, we're going to try some of this removable high strength thread sealer as, you know, using too strong of thread sealer on those, you know, on those studs can cause damage over time. So we'll clean those up with a little wire brush, put a little thread sealer on there. Time for the best part. Keep going. Stop. One more time. Good boy. You did it. Lug nuts, 100 foot pounds. The axle nut was 203. All right, real quick, in conclusion of this video, I'm going to point out the four biggest things that I've learned from this job, what um, I did wrong, what I do differently, uh, what I would have prepared before starting this job. First major issue is something that I did years ago when I did a wheel bearing on this vehicle. I took somebody's advice and took the axle nut all the way to the end of the CV shaft. And the idea is that you can strike that with a hammer and have a lot larger area to strike and reduce um, the risk of pancaking the end of the CV shaft, which ended up destroying the threads and I wound up replacing the entire CV shaft. So I did not make that error this time, um, but I made the second error that I demonstrated so perfectly. Uh, whatever my excuse was, I wasn't paying attention, but after pressing out the hub, I never flipped over the knuckle and I thought I was pressing the um, wheel bearing out when in fact I was just pushing it in even further and destroyed the entire knuckle. That was a costly mistake and I have learned from that and hopefully uh, those of you out there don't make the same uh, ignorant mistake I made. Um, issue number three comes down to, uh, well let's back up real quick. Also what I would have before starting this job is a larger diameter uh, wheel bearing race uh, plate in those kits um, as the biggest one that I had I meant I called out the, the size of it earlier um, it's not big enough to support the outer race so that's something that I'm gonna purchase uh, to have on hand in the future maybe it's a specialty plate or maybe other kits have larger diameters uh, fourth is where we're at uh, the biggest issue is my hydraulic press is a inexpensive harbor freight press and the issue luckily it didn't cause a big problem but i'm going to show and maybe you can see here that there is play on these guys and i've seen that online on other videos this gap here and when i start pressing down maybe i can zoom in on this shaft here it is at an angle when I start pressing down, it naturally wants to press in against the support bar and it's um, at an angle. So it's pressing it in unevenly. And I noticed that as I'm um, pressing this down, if I hold this outward, that shaft is level. 
So that was my workaround. I'm going to have to figure out something to wedge in here um, so I don't continue to have that problem. But if you happen to have this same uh, press, which a lot of people do because it's inexpensive, that's something to look out for. Um, the um, wheel a minute ago, well, I, I should say a few days ago when I stopped filming, it did have a little residual play horizontally. That is no longer the case. This wheel does not move at all. I have been driving it for about a week. I have not had it aligned yet, but when I'm going down the road and I let go, it's not pulling any direction, but I do uh, plan on still taking it in for alignment. But that horizontal play, um, that came down to the um, toe link. Real quick show what happened. This nut, you know, that's on the other side of the flag that I uh, torqued down to spec. It did work its way loose a bit, and I tightened it down. And that horizontal play um, was at, at that point taken care of. So uh, that concludes the video. Uh, this is Wise Guy. I appreciate you watching. I hope this helps somebody out there.